Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So I am here with Sarah Goldman Foster and Heather Hanna, who, as you all know, our new director of membership and communication is on the call as well. We are in my office. Um, just so you all know, I am getting back from being out last week and playing catch up. So, um, so I, uh, I'm sure you all have a lot of questions. Um, I know that some folks were emailing last week. Um, I don't have an agenda, as you know, for these calls. I know that um, that's a little bit hard because it's kind of free form and organic. But I need you all to help drive the conversation. Um, we are calling today and scheduling these calls once a week at the request of you all last week um, at the ECLA meeting just because the RFA came out um, just last Friday, I believe, um, and you all wanted to connect with each other and be able to answer questions of each other. So it looks like we have quite a few councils on the call. Um, Sure, sure. So we've got Angie, Claudia, Karina, Dorothy, Emily, Heather Hawk, Jessica, Lucinda, Pam, Jerry Hannah Rue, Jerry Valdez. Oh, and we are recording the call. Jose's helping me out with that. So just so that we send out a link. Um, Betsy just arrived. Tiffany from Alliance for Kids, El Paso County just arrived. <laughs> They're coming in still. We'll wait just a few more minutes. Hi, Liz. It's Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? I'm great. I'm on the road. Do I need a computer, or can this is this just a phone call? I think it's just going to be a phone call for now, unless oh, people great. want me to pull up recent documents that have been sent out. Um, just as a reminder, sometimes I get copied on e emails sent out by the Office of Early Childhood. Sometimes I don't, so I might not have all the information that you all have. Okay. Um, okay, so oh, Stacy Petty just showed up. Okay, again, the call is being recorded, but we do want this to be that safe space. You know, we'll keep this totally internal. Um, if you all could mute yourself, that would be great. So we don't have any background, but please, please feel free to join in in the conversation. I was just telling the folks, uh, for those of you who just showed up, um, that I was out almost all last week. I am trying to get caught up on emails. I know the RFA dropped on Friday, I believe. Um, so this is your time to talk to each other, to ask questions of each other, to try and you know, if, if you have a question or are confused by something, as you all know, chances are somebody else is as well in our uh, family of councils. So um, Sarah is here to take notes. If there are questions that you all can't answer amongst yourselves, we are more than happy to uh, put those questions forward collectively to the Office of Early Childhood. Um, so I'm just going to throw it open to you all. Um, I know that Jackie has some questions about the QI funding, um, but does anybody want to kick off the conversation? Um, this is Sherry um, Valdez. I'd, I'd be happy to. Thank you, um, Sherry. So I'm still waiting for the vendor self-support to show the RFA. Um, am I incorrect in thinking that that's going to show up there? They, this is Stacy. Hi. <clears throat> they emailed the RFA out, and then it's also on the OEC site. 
if you're talking about the RFP for CCR and R, it was there Friday afternoon as well. No, I was talking about um, anything to do with the council or QI. That That's was, not on the vendor self-service portal like I no. thought it was going to be. No, I think it's just on their website. Um, it's not on the VSS site. Only the RFP is on the VSS site. And is what, what is on the Office of Early Childhood website, is that anything different than all the attachments we received on Friday? It's the exact same thing. Okay. So is there any identification <clears throat> of the infant and toddler grant separately from just QI? Um, my understanding, and maybe others have a different understanding, is based on the webinar and the documents we got, they are combining ITQA, CCAP QI, and school readiness is what it appears to me as, as one overarching thing. So in the QI information where it gives the base for QI, and then... That's just for Colorado Shine, Sherry. ITQA, CCAP, and school readiness is a separate piece that's going to be competitive. That's my, this so is the one with, yeah, the one with base and everything is just for Colorado Shines work moving forward. ITQA, CCAP, and uh, school readiness is going to be a separate competitive um, piece to this grant. My, this is Jackie. Can you guys hear me okay? Sometimes I have problems with my microphone. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can hear you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, that's my understanding as well, Stacy. The uh, my understanding is there's, well, four different components. Again, she referred us to that PowerPoint. The one given that Stacy's referring to is our base operating cost, and then the, the Colorado Shines base operating cost, and then the all of the um, um, other components are competitive, um, and that's from my, and that, I guess that's why I saw my question. They give us some funding over to the right. My understanding that that is the maximum amount that, in addition, we can receive. And I guess my question, the other question is, is, is that based on the percentage of children that we have that are at a level two and CCAP eligible, or is that based on our competitiveness as we write the RFA, or is that a combination of both? Can you guys reference what, if you, are you guys talking about Exhibit G? Yeah, are we talking about Exhibit G? Let me pull up those documents. Um, so whenever we're referencing something, it would be helpful to say what exhibit it comes from and if there's a certain page number just so that we can make sure that we're all talking about the same thing, for me good anyway. Point. That's a good point. So ex Exhibit G, yes. I was referring to Exhibit G. And so it's my understanding, again, I, I very much appreciate what everybody else's understanding on this, but from reading through the documents, and again, I still have questions, I understand that there's a base that everybody gets, and that's in the first column, that's our operating cost. And then the very last column in Exhibit G, is that's the maximum amount that we can receive. But again, is that based on the percentage of children we have that are level two in CCAP, is that based on our RFA scores as they come back, or is that based on a combination of both? It looks like, as this is Stacy again, it looks like as I've crunched those numbers, it's 60% of your total program count, which is on that spreadsheet as well. It is. It yeah, is. And so it appears to be 60% of that total program count. Because one of the goals of the OEC set forth was that we had 60% of programs at level two high or higher, um, you know, in the next three years, I think 2020. So if you go down to scroll down and on line 42 where they provide some clarity, it says early child counselors will be able to award up to 
percent of the programs within the designated service area in the first few months of the contract. Um, and if you read the RFA, it talks in several places about the committee being able to award up to that maximum amount. So I'm just, I was just trying to clarify that the line item F, it, it is a definite combination of C, D, and E. C e is a given. C e and E, from my understanding, again, that's what I'm trying to clarify, is that how we're going to be scored? Is that based on our intake? Is that a combination of both? Yeah, so when I read the RSA, my understanding is, is we'll have October, November, and December to get programs, homes and centers, to get up to level two and apply for funding or, you know, like we have been. And then the state will approve waitlisted programs so they can access those dollars. That is $1,000 for each home and $1,750 for each center. And we will have enough money to work with up to 60% if we have that. But it sounds like after the January approval that we aren't going to be able to, on a rolling basis, keep accepting more. So whatever we have in those three months and we get them waitlisted is who we're going to have to work with. Which makes sense given that would only give us through June to do that work with those programs. So really, yeah, as a two, what we actually do in recruiting now between then. But then where does the competitiveness come in on Colorado Shines? And it, that's what I I'm don't thinking. believe there is competitiveness on Colorado Shines. Or, Jackie, I think they allowed it for, for everyone. That's why it's broke out by council. The competitiveness is for ITQA, CCAP, QI, and school readiness. And what are those funds? What are, those where funds are the, aren't on this sheet at all. Those are a separate pot of money. Um, for those programs, they're putting them together and we have to put in applications if you're applying for those, for those funds. And that's a competitive um, grant. Okay, okay. So, Boy, I really appreciate that, Stacy. So is that everybody's understanding? That that helps clarify. Um, so what I'm understanding is what we see on this sheet is our um, what we can receive up to this amount of money based on our that uh, we can receive up to this amount to work towards our Colorado Shines. And Stacy, are you saying that this is a given? And then the second part, the competitiveness is funding. We don't even know what that exists. We don't even know what that is. After we read our application, then we're going to be awarded accordingly. Yeah, the ITQA, CCAP, QI, and full readiness, I, I think what they're doing by combining those, because when we got ITQA four years ago, it was a separate competitive grant and a separate pot of money. And so it, it appears to me, um, and while my name's Stacy, it's not the Stacy with an EY, um, <laughs> we might want to still get, um, you know, get their, their take on it. But it appears to me this is money they've set aside for us to continue to do work to meet that goal of having 60% of sites at level two or higher. This seems to be separate this Colorado Shines funding, okay. ITQA and all of that is going to be separate. And we only had 11 councils get ITQA funding initially, and it was very competitive. And, and that is going to be after, that's a separate part of this RFA that anyone applying for it is going to be putting in for. Um, okay. And there isn't guidelines, like you can apply for up to this much or, or whatever. And there wasn't, honestly, um, the last time around either. Okay. So Stacy, okay. this is Sherry. Yeah. Where are you seeing that? Is it in the general overview? Is it in the, um, what part of that gives you that clarification for the competitive nature of the QI grants? It was in the webinar, but also, um, 
in the RFA itself, it talks about, I have to find it. Oh, and of course, I've got too many grants going on at one time here. Hold on. Um, I will, while others talk, I will look for that. Um, but I also had Liz McGilvray read over this, and she came to me with the exact same understanding as well, and she was the one who wrote the 1291 grant for us originally. Well, that's so how, I, that was not the way I understood it, but, but I, I was very unclear, so I... Um, yeah, this is Pam Walker. I talked with Michelle about that yes. um, because I was asking why they wouldn't answer questions just to us, you know. And she said, well, it's because of the competitive nature of that particular three things um, that you have to submit questions and then they answer them all at once so that because it's competitive, everybody can hear so that led me to believe those three are separate. I didn't realize till I saw this, you know, what what exactly it was going to look like. This is Angie, and on the final document um, on the attachments, page 11, it says that this solicitation includes two sections, the Systems Building Grant and the Colorado Shines Quality Improvement Grant, and that Colorado Shines piece includes the ITQA, um, the PCAP, and the school readiness, or the targeted quality is what it's called now, and school readiness. So this RFA contains those two components only. So the way you're understanding this, Angie, is possibly the way I understood it. This is Jackie, that actually this included me, and our competitive, competitiveness all go together. Jackie, can you repeat that? That was just a little bit hard to understand. Okay, sure. Um, so, Angie, are you understanding from what I heard you say? You're, you're contradicting a little bit of what Susie said. Is that that there actually are only I'm understanding that we are applying, we're submitting this one RFA, we're applying for our systems building, and any of the um, Colorado Shine Quality Improvement funding that we are eligible for. So if you're not eligible for school readiness, then I'm understanding that that pot of money that it lines out will be adjusted accordingly. That's if you are funded for all of the um, grants that are available. That's my understanding though. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, can anybody else speak up as to what the end of the it's, it's really hard to hear. So there is quite a bit of background noise. And, and, and Jackie, if there's, um, I'm not sure if your headset is not working well or if you have another way to join us. It's, it is hard to hear you. I, I apologize. That's okay. Why don't I call in on the phone, guys? Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Sorry for the trouble. No worries. I'll call it. Okay. It also says that applicants must demonstrate a need and provide a plan to improve quality and increase capacity. So I'm guessing that's where the competitive piece comes in. If you don't um, demonstrate a high enough need, then you may not get the full amount of funding that other communities who have a higher need may get. Angie, which document are you talking about again? Because you broke out when you said it the first time. It's, I'm sorry, it's this, this is Liz. Hey, Angie, sorry. If you guys are not speaking, can you please mute? There's a lot of background noise. Thank you. On the attachment, it's the one that says final ECC systems building Colorado Shines QI RFA document. And it begins with a memo from Erin Mawinney. That's the first page of that attachment that I'm talking about. Thank you. That's attachment 
Um, exhibit B. No, it doesn't actually have a letter on it. It's after it would be exhibit L because it's the very final um, attachment that says final ECC systems building, Colorado Shines, yada, yada. Thank you. This is Jackie again. Is this better? Yes. That's okay. much better, Jackie. Thank you. Good. Uh, Angie, you're reading this the way I'm reading this, that there's only two parts. So, again, I really appreciate this discussion to be clear on, you know, the system building is, that's done. But then if you read, they do have quite a bit of things that you have to um, write down that you have to explain for the competitive Colorado Shines piece. So it sounds like nobody's clear on this. Well, you know, in the thing that um, Angie just referenced, it talks about the first section is systems building, the second is competitive and addresses Colorado Shines quality improvement funding. And there are only two pieces. So I think that, you know, I think that really confirms it in writing. So this is Sherry. Um, I have a question about who's eligible. You know, Stacy sent us out on Friday after ECLA or during ECLA, you know, if we had school um, eligible schools in our community. Um, but what about CCAP? I mean, they gave us, like, who had contracts with them, but are they giving us a list like they did before with eligible CCAP sites? or? Are we just supposed to get that ourselves and hopefully that it's accurate? This is Stacy again. They said in the webinar that moving forward, CCAP sites to qualify for CCAP QI, homes had to have at least two children and centers still had to have eight, I believe. And you can run that report in Sugar. Okay, I, I mean, I, I'm understanding that what the parameters were. It's just before the parameters were that we had to go off their list, whether it was accurate or not, and tell them whether it was accurate. So I just want to make sure that they're not providing a list that we need to use, because otherwise I will just pull a report. I would just pull the report, and if they come out with something different, but they would probably ask ECLA to pull the same report, you know, or they would verify it, but that'd be a starting point with such a quick turnaround. That's what I intend to do. So this is Emily. I just have a question about what our plan is for how we're submitting questions to the state. Is there a plan for how we're going to do that so that we can kind of see the list of questions that we have and then know that they're answered or? There's, well, a, there's Emily, only a window. I, yeah. There's a window of time in which we can ask questions. What is that window? It's in the RFA. It says that we, uh, up until the seventh, we can email inquiries to Lisa Vaughn, and then no questions will be accepted after noon on the seventeenth. Yeah. So they're going to answer questions this Friday and the following Friday. And I just got confirmation of that from Monica as well. She said just for us to put our items in writing and then they will send out responses to everybody. Okay, so that's what I'm asking is who's, who's, who's compiling the questions in writing and sending them to Lisa Vaughn? Well, I asked Michelle that question when she told me about the limited times of questions and she said, um, I can send them to her personally as I'm thinking up the questions and that they don't all have to be sent at once. Um, we probably should confirm that because I don't know if all of our uh, identified people have the same thought on that, but that's what she did tell me at the meeting.
So this is Liz. I'm just wondering, um, since we are not officially a part of this, you know, and I didn't even receive the RFA, I mean, we're happy to compile them, obviously, and Sarah's taking detailed notes here, but it might be that they won't accept questions from ECLA, you know, because we're not officially an intermediary, but one of, we could get those questions to one of you, and you could submit it on behalf of everyone. Um, just to make sure we're all following proper procedure, I would hate for them to just disregard our questions because we're not formally a part of this process. Emily, that would be great. Yeah, no, I think that's great just to have you all aggregate it and then, yeah, we can definitely have a council submit it. I, I agree. We don't want to have a procedural thing prevent our questions from being answered, but I, I just wanted to be efficient in that we're capturing all the questions in one place because I think we'll be able to get a better response from them as well. You know, whenever, it, rather than 31 councils saying them 31 questions each, you know, they tend to kind of not be able to handle that. So we really do want to kind of consolidate as much as possible. Okay, and, and we can send that out to everyone for your input and edit, you know, mm -hmm. obviously efficiently. We'll put a time timeline on that to provide input. Um, Sarah wants to Yeah, say well, I actually have a favor. Um, I am taking detailed notes, but because I want to capture everything and the essence of what you're saying, if you could um, email me your questions directly, um, does that make sense, Liz? And then we can compile them, and because um, I have a feeling that we'll get, you know, <laughs> one of the same questions more than once. So. Right, and we want to make sure we're, we're, we're conveying every, everyone's concerns. Yes, and conveying what needs to be conveyed. Right. I think that's a good plan. Thanks, Sarah. Of course. Okay, thank you. So do people have other questions? Hi. I know you um, haven't I'm, had a whole lot of time. Go ahead. It's, Kat, it's Kathleen, and I just have a question um, about 7.717B that they're referring to throughout the RFA. Um, and I can't seem to find that on the um, in the rules package anywhere. I've circled it. Uh, um, quite a few times as I've read through this. It's on page 13. In order to be considered for this section of the RFA, organizations must meet these requirements. In addition, the following application information noted in section 7.717.B must be submitted with the application in order to be awarded these funds. Does anybody know where that is in the rules package? Kathleen, read the numbers off yeah. one more time. The number is 7.717.B, and it's on page 13, and then it's again on page 16 towards the top as they talk about early childhood systems building grant required application components. 7.717.B. Point B. Mm hmm And I don't I don't see that reference in our rules package. There's a point six B. I mean there's a point six. Okay. At one point when I saw that it was seven point seven one seven point six. Maybe the B is after that. I I'm trying to find your the what what page did you reference? It was page thirteen. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of different references. Uh, seven point. No, it just says B must be submitted. Ah, oh, dear. That sounds like a typo because there is no, you know, there is no. There is point no B, B anywhere yet. There is no point B in the rules package, and it is cited again on sixteen. And then I feel like it's somewhere else in here as well. Right. So, so point for us six, to get clarification around that. Okay. The point six B is on page seven of the rule. 
and that is each early childhood council seeking infrastructure, quality improvement, technical assistance, and evaluation funding shall submit an application to the State Department that includes these seven things listed. So that sort of sounds like what they're talking about, the, um, you know, the components of the application, the nuts and bolts of it. Okay, so seven of we're the thinking bolts. it's actually, we're thinking it's actually 7.717 Point six, section B. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I um, that's what it sounds like. They just left off the six, but that's just okay. me looking at this mm -hmm. at, at a glance. What other questions or concerns do people have? Liz, can I, this is Jackie again, and I'm sorry, I'm still harping on the same question. What, I just want to clarify then that we are understanding this is two parts and not three. That the Colorado Shines, so that the Exhibit G, the um, funding listed in column F, excuse me, the columns listed in, in the funding listed in columns D and E are the competitive piece to this. And, and we will need to know this when we put together our budget. Maybe it's too early. Maybe people haven't soaked in the RF, RFA information enough to Jackie, on the attachment that I referenced earlier, page 15, it says you're to organize your applications in the following components and in the order of the transmittal letter, the systems building, the Colorado Shines quality improvement, and the budget. That would lead me to believe there's only two pieces to this RFA. Okay. Required application component. So the RFA components is number... B is the RFA for systems building. C is the um, um, RFA for the Colorado Shines component. And D is a budget that would comprise both the um, numbers and F as well as our systems building budget together. That's what we're applying for. One budget That's together. Okay. And again, is should we be like back to Emily's question then like to get clarification on this? Do you want us to just to put this questions out? Everybody put the questions out in general and then we can all see them addressed. Yes. Yeah, I think that would be great. And if maybe if you could even send us the questions by the end of today so that we are staying on top of this in a timely manner, that would be great. Very good. And is there any information in any of these handouts um, related to the possible ITQA funding? Or is it just all lumped into exhibit whatever? Um, <laughs> that give the base funding for councils. So Kathleen, this is Heather. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, after reviewing um, Exhibit G, it looks like that base funding is the base budget that they were talking about in the webinar for all QI. That would be, that is what you would be able to use to administer all the QI funding streams does that make sense? Yeah, so if, if we have school readiness and ITQA and CCAP QI, which is called something different now, we Targeted. need to work off of this $28,000 number? That's what I'm, that's what I'm reading from this. From Where this are you exhibit. getting 28000 Everybody, everyone has the different base sum funding on 
Uh, right. the second page of Exhibit G, and for Kathleen, it's 28. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so sure that's that. why she's yeah. So I'm 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 not understanding how this is competitive if they've already set a base funding. So that's this is Jackie, and that's that's my clarification and question. Um, I believe again, columns D and E are the competitiveness. Column C is a given, and column C is a given. Our systems building money is a given, but columns D and E are competitive. And then my question again is it based, it's based on the RFA, the competitiveness, but is it, also, is it also based on the percentage of children that um, we already have at a level two in CCAP? And maybe, maybe that's already the given because that's the number in D and E. So the last part of the competitiveness is just how we respond to the RFA. Whether we're going to get that total amount of D and E or the portion of it, depending on how well we respond to the RFA for Colorado Shine. But the total amount we're of D and E on on Exhibit G, page two, the total amount of D and E are G are the drawdown from the general fund. They're not even going to come to the councils. The G. GAE is not even going to come down to the council. So I'm wondering what is competitive about setting a base uh, operating cost and then if you demonstrate that you still have need, they'll open the GAE to your sites? Is that what they're, is that the competitive part of it? So I referred them back to Exhibit B and that's the one slide the PowerPoint slide where it breaks up those components. And I also asked this question on Friday at ECLA because one of my big questions has been where are they going to put coaching? And from my understanding, again, I think that's what, if you look at the questions, if you look at the verbiage they use, they have put together um, no, it's on that guidance sheet, um, which exhibit I. But they said quality incentives and program support. They've grouped both of those together. So program. So if you look at the power slide, the PowerPoint slide, then if you compare that with exhibit I, call overview of Colorado Shine's business rules, they have put program quality incentives and program import improvement supports together. Again, that's what I'm trying to clarify. So, so we have the um, implementation supports is column, is that our base operating support that we talked about, which is column C, and that's my understanding. Then column D and E are program quality incentives as well as program improvement supports, or that's my question. From the way I'm reading this, it's a con it's that's what those are so it supports both learning environment materials professional development and coaching is that how other people are reading it angie is that how you're reading this yes yes that's exactly how i read it is that money it's earmarked, so $1,000 for a home is earmarked for that home, and the council decides how much of that 1000 will go into coaching and how much of that 1000 will be used for professional development or quality materials. That's my understanding. Okay, very good. And this is Claudia. And when you're, ta when you're talking about column C, D, and E, what exhibit are you on? I'm on exhibit G. Okay. And are we making up these columns, or do, do they say column B, C, D? Because I don't have those. You don't have it. If you have it, more to, if you have it, they're, in they're a, up at the top. Okay, I don't have that part. So, what are we calling column B? Are we calling column B count of provider ID, or column B the the blue column with all the uh, numbers? Count of provider ID. Okay. 
This is Claudia. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, so when we were at our ECLA in, or actually the state TA day in January, they, um, they handed out a paper for the race to the top QI awards. And they had already, they had moved us to doing that. Um, remember they said there was not going to be any coaching additional to those amounts that they were going to be giving out for the QI incentive. So, um, and I'm not I sure heard that too. Be, I, yeah, and I think it might already be in effect because that was um, uh, starting in January. So I think it's already apparently going into effect of uh, anybody that's moving over now there is no additional coaching unless you have those funds, apparently. But as far as that um, incentive, that's what it looks like here on this document they gave us in January. And it says awards must be spent by June 30th of 17. So I'm not sure that this didn't already go into place in January, um, having the coaching in, um, included with the, the QI dollar amounts. This is Tiffany. Can you hear me? Um, I think so. Keep talking, and let's. Um, I okay. think you're fine. So I just want to make sure that the the document that you're referring to is that race to the top QI awards for programs L2 through L5, January 2017. Yes, that's what I was referring to that they gave us in January. Yes. Yeah. That was for programs that they defined already as quality in that level three to five would not receive coaching, receive their QI dollars. Um, but then they have um, out, like money's worth of coaching that they could receive for levels one and two. Well, level two, really. Yeah, right. So I'm seeing that, that level two had a little bit of additional um, coaching that they could add, but those level three through five, there there was not. So that's, that's looking like what they're going to want on this um, moving forward. That's how it's going to go, it looks like, is that, like I think it was Angie was saying, that we're going to have to have the coaching included in that incentive amount, and um, it, it can go to whatever we believe that they need. So it may not be that they need materials or anything like that, but it'll be up to us and there is no additional funds. I think it's laid out pretty clearly in Exhibit I, page, oh, there's no page numbers on Exhibit I, but um, page two. There's a table that says that the amount of funding that will be awarded to family child care homes, centers with two to three, I'm sorry, one to three classrooms and centers with four or more classrooms, and then the allowable use of quality improvement support and incentive funding coaching is listed. This is Jackie, and that's also how I understand it. So I just wanted to clarify that, that um, it, exactly how Angie explained it and exactly what I just heard as well in Exhibit I and number two, and that it will be up to the councils now to decide if it's do they more coaching, do they need more materials. Um, we will determine that after we receive our award so that we can determine how much money we have to work with. This is Angie, and on that same um, document, same page, number four, mm -hmm. it talks about tiered reimbursement. Um, and if you follow that number four onto the next page, it says Colorado Shines quality improvement funding may only be used to augment existing provider rates for programs being supported at a Colorado Shines high level of three to five. What does that mean? 
We can use this thousand dollars for a home to help augment their rates if they're tier. Yeah, actually, that's um, a holdover. This is Heather. It's a holdover from the ITQA scope of work, which had a tiered reimbursement incentive for programs to pursue a level three through five, and we would supplement their um, CCAP reimbursement if they pursued a higher level of care. And that was actually the structure of the agreement with our um, Department of Human Services for the initial ITQA application. But oh. now, that, now that the CCAP tiered reimbursement state um, laws have gone into effect, instead of requiring your Department of Human Services to augment your CCAP reimbursement rates through ITQA, the agreement can be to allow those programs that are level three through five to use some of their quality improvement funding to augment their tier. So I don't know how we're supposed to document that, though. I mean, that's why it says we have to have a plan for how that um, reimbursement will be distributed to sites. Well, yeah, you know what? I, I, that's, that is really interesting because right now what happens in ITQA is the department decides and, I mean, we have mutually agreed in our grant what that rate's going to be, and then they pay that on top of the tiered reimbursement. Right, and the new, um, that memo the new that one we out, would be deciding? Well, it, you would still need a letter of support from your department, but apparently the department doesn't have to receive any of the budget. They don't have to be the ones to pay that out. It can be paid out through the council. That's the way I understood that as well. This is Jackie. That the ITQA, even though we don't, we're not a current grantee, that this is going to look quite different moving forward. Okay. Um, this is Sherry again. Um, can I just clarify something? This is how I read it. I, I think um, this weekend. But if we can look at that attachment that lists the base funding for QI plus the potential GAE at 60%, which is the G, Exhibit G, then in, in my column, we're on line 19, then it's saying that we would have $59,890 in quality improvement, that's base plus what goes out to benefit the providers. And that's inclusive of everything we're talking about. And so I'm, I'm asking for clarification. So that includes my infant and toddler grant, ITQA, school readiness, any CCAP, and the tiered reimbursement portion for the county. I don't know that. Yeah, that's what I understand from this form. And that's wow. this is Jackie, and that's how I understand it as well, Sherry. Now, also, right. my understanding so, though is that it's the blue column that is the council operating costs, and that the orange column, both of those numbers are from the GAE. So like race to the top, there's going to be a formula, and if we approve a site that's eligible, they're going to be, the formula is going to be determined by Exhibit I, page 2, and the councils are not going to get to determine how much is assigned to each program. Only The only thing we can lay out is uh, recommendations about whether or not that program needs coaching or if they would be better served by buying materials, or if they should use that funding for tiered reimbursement. <laughs> Lisa, is that so your how, So, yeah, I think my under, I don't know that tiered reimbursement is necessarily in here. I think it's an option. I think ideally they're hoping that the tiered reimbursement comes from the department and that not out of this funding, but this funding could be used for tiered reimbursement. I think the other piece, and again, I didn't go over this in depth like some of you did yet, um, 
is, I agree, this is like race to the top, and so those GAE pieces are not going to get pulled down. I mean, even though it says they're there, they're not really there until you engage every single program in your community. So um, I think that's the other piece. This is a little misleading to think that you have all this money, but you really, in my, I'm thinking that you don't have it until that program is engaged and, and reaching quality levels until you can pull it down some of the race to the top. And I think it does include, from what I read, it includes every single QI project. So it includes targeted school readiness and ITQA. It's all included in that. So my question is, I, and again, I need to read through it more, is if you are eligible for school readiness, targeted QA, and ITQI, are you getting the same amount of money as someone who's only eligible for one? I, it doesn't, it looks like you are. So yeah, Lisa, no that was a clarification question. If you're asking for school readiness, correct. That was a clarification question we um, clarified on Friday at ECLA, that if you have one program that's eligible for school readiness, or if you right. have 30 no, that's programs. Not, right, that's not what I was asking. <laughs> what I was saying, though, is that pretend I'm ABC Child Care, and I technically am eligible for school readiness, and I'm ready for, and I'm eligible for targeted QA, or targeted, and I'm eligible for ITQA. In the past, that meant you actually were eligible for more funding. The way that this is set up, I can't tell if that means I'm eligible for more funding, or is every single center eligible for 1750, even if you are, even if you qualify for all three projects? In that's past, my understanding, Lee. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's what's different as well, is that in the end, it doesn't matter if you're eligible for school readiness versus targeted QA versus, um, and you're right, everybody's eligible for school readiness, I guess, but. No, they're not. Well, it doesn't matter. You all get the same amount of money. If I'm, if I'm eligible for targeted QA versus eligible for school, it doesn't matter. In the end, every center gets 1750 in my community. If <sighs> it's how I'm reading it that every program in my community is eligible for $1,000 if they're home, $1,750 if they're a center. That includes coaching. And it doesn't really matter what I'm eligible for. It does, I don't understand where the pieces around you have to take eight kids on CCAP to be eligible for targeted QI, when in the end, every program is, qual is eligible for $1,750 or $1,000. That's not my understanding. Um, my understanding, again, is that the levels, excuse me, columns D and E are the competitiveness, that that total number right there is not a given yet until we get our contract award back. Right. Then once we get our contract award back and we know who we're, and, and again, we can be outreaching now, but the outreach that we do has to be to those levels that are level two and accept CCAP. So first of all, it's not every single ECE site. It's they have to have those requirements, and family child care providers have to have a minimum, a minimum of two, and centers a minimum of eight. Then all of those in that category are eligible. And the maximum amount of funding we're going to get are the combination of uh, D&E is 60% of that. That's a, this is the maximum amount we could we could get this year, and it may be less than that. It will depend on what our contract award is. That's, that's how I read this. But I, I guess my question is, if I'm eligible for all three projects, do I get more funding than someone who's only eligible for one project? And I think that is up to how we write our RFA. And um, I, I think that somewhat gives us, gives councils the opportunity to designate that. And I think what Lisa's asking is, as a child care program, are you eligible for more than, as a child care home, am I eligible for more than $1,000? Or am I, is it $1,000 per funding source? So 1,000 for CCAP, 1,000 for ITQA, and 1,000 for um, school readiness? Or is it 1,000 regardless of how many of those grants I am eligible for? And my understanding is because they put them all together in one category per community, it's all together. But that's my understanding. That'd be a great clarifying question. Yeah, that's where okay. my question comes in. It's because I think, what's the point of 
of taking up to eight CCAP kids if I'm not going to get more fun. You know, so I just, I think there's got to be some incentive for some of those other, anyway, someone else is going to talk. Well, this is Sherry again. I just don't, um, so for me the realization is how, how can you possibly plan for potential coaching needed if you, you have $18,000 for QI? And that's just like that, that, that base, that outreach, and that doesn't pay for their office or anything. So basically I'm, I'm shaking here a little bit, guys, because all of a sudden in the last couple of days I'm losing $200,000. So how, and I know we're all in binds for, for different reasons, on the systems building and, and different things, but um, how do you possibly continue quality improvement and do coaching and training, um, and who helps them with the purchasing of materials and, and those things if you don't even have enough in your pot to have a body to do that? So, just rhetorical, but. No, I think, I think that's huge, an excellent. Huge could we, could we put that in what as a question? Do. Did that go in as a question? Yeah, I think well, um, how that's... to man. Yeah. Yeah, who, Sherry, who this is Heather. This I had the same question. How is it competitive if they have set a base rate for what we are able to apply for in order to fill that role to support those programs? There's nothing competitive about that. It's it's basically just the same as the systems building where they've laid out um a floor and the ceiling again and assume that that person, whether they're in on the front range or in the San Luis Valley, that they're cheaper because there's fewer programs. Yeah, and it doesn't even allow enough money to keep a coach to serve 50% of our providers. It's not many, but one coach can't possibly do that if you, if you really are looking at best practices and really coaching. Um, we're just getting back to flyby, and I'll swing in and help you sign in and, and make your purchases, but I can't coach you to change your, your practices. And they even said that, um, that they were doing a practice-based coaching model. That's, there's no way to touch that model with this, these kinds of dollars. So it makes me wonder if it's even worth it, um, just find other funding to continue our work outside of, of the state. I don't know what to do with $18,000. I can't even pay for a person and a space for 18000 So just my two cents. I'm those not sure great. how to so, think about it. Yeah, those are great questions. And one of the things that I've been waiting to see is where they put the coaching line. And I, I was disappointed to see that they, they put that all together. It would, have been, it would have been helpful to have put some base, some coaching um, in some base operating costs to help cover that. But yeah, I, I, so I, I do understand what you're saying. And what's funny is if you say anything about that to them, they're going to say you can put base right. coaching in your program, but who has the money to do it? Yeah. By the time you cover all your overhead. Right. Yeah. Right. This is Jackie. I have to sign off. I have a 12 o'clock. I do appreciate the conversation, and it really helped me to clarify. And Liz, I will be sending you my questions by the end of the day. Very good. Could you also copy Sarah on those questions, Jackie? Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. I'm, ha I'm happy to continue the conversation if other people have questions, or, or we can wrap it up. Are there any other lingering, lasting um, challenges you guys want to bring up right now? Liz, this is Lisa. I had to jump on late because I had another meeting before this. I assumed it was recorded. Yes, mm -hmm. it's recorded. Thank you. Yep. Um, my question is, uh, this is Tam. I <clears throat> are is the will they be sending? When will they be answering questions? Do they wait until the seventeenth? Or I, I wasn't quite understanding that people talked about the. 10th, or maybe you mentioned that, Liz, or the 7th. Could you help me out a little bit on the timelines for answering the questions? Pam, the timeline is on that letter from Erin McGuinney on page oh, okay. 4 of 30. All right. Got it.
Hello. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Um, can any council maybe give some suggestions of where to start with something that isn't confusing? Like if we're really <laughs> wanting to start. Thank you like for that comment. Working, yeah, like we want to start working on the grant. Um, would it be answering the questions um, highlighted in statement of work requirements? Would that be a good place to start? You know, under and then we've got response format with the transmittal letter with very specific outlined directions of how to answer the questions. Um, I just feel like I want to get started somehow, some way. Um, that wouldn't conflict with any potential answers that we may or may not get on the 7th or the 17th. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. I mean, I you think, know, to start. and I think in, in terms of starting, I mean, I feel like the systems building is a little bit more clear. It's the quality improvement that's uh -huh. the least clear. Um, yeah. And so I feel like I could probably at least get started on some of the systems building pieces of it. And I do uh -huh. think, though, that we need to say to them that there's enough uncertainty in the QI piece that we do need answers sooner rather than later. And waiting until the 10th or whatever is, I don't know what that one page four said about timelines, but um, it's kind of a hindrance if we can't get some questions sooner for answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So to reiterate, please send me and Sarah questions that you have. We want to make sure we're complete and we're accurate. Um, does any does any council volunteer to submit councils on behalf of everyone else? Submit questions. Yeah, to submit the questions to the state. Does somebody want to volunteer to do that? We'll do that, this is Emily in Denver, if no one else okay. wants to. Okay. Thank you, Emily. I have one last question. This is Heather. In Exhibit F, has anybody reviewed those numbers for the year one, two, three, and found them different from the original uh, uh, systems building allocation document that we got in January? Yes. Do you have a question about that? <laughs> I have a question about that. Um, I just figured I missed something along the way. Don't know. How significant are the differences, Heather? Um, like I thought what? there was a $15,000 base per it, county minimum. Yeah. And Some I'm shy about $6,000 at the end of the day, but they're not showing me that amount per county per year. And then there's decreases, like from year in Alamosa County, for an example, in year two, there was so much money um, for that base, and then it was even less in year three. So I couldn't follow that at all. Yeah, and ours went, ours goes down significantly in year one from what we were originally told, and then it goes back up in year two, and then goes back down in year three. So to me, column. B, which is the year one grant funding, doesn't look accurate. Heather, mine's off by 22,002 for the yeah. first year. Uh-huh. Mine's, mine's off by, yes. This is Claudia, mine's year, year off about one, that much. What, what? Guys, year one, year one is, is only October. It starts in October, so it's three months short. Okay, so that's why. That's why. No, that's that's good. Thank you for clarifying that. I just wanted to be sure because obviously the base looks different 
for a lot of these counties, like Bent County, there is no 15,000 base. For Crowley, there's no and Danielle with the Danielle with the base funding that's starting in until October. I was under the impression that we would be getting July, August, September funding from our, at our current, current rate. That's right. Yeah, that's no. Right. Okay. Um, I talked I talked to um, Stacy about this because I'm concerned about the rules on how we can spend money in those three months. Mm -hmm. And um, and she said, well, remember, um, July one, your three month rate is based on your 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 new rate. So whatever they sat down and told us was our new rate for the next three years, um, because we're already reduced. Do you know what I mean? I'm not explaining this very well, but um, so we're not getting 25% of what last year's allocation was. We're getting 25% of what our new allocation is supposed to be for year one, and then we'll get 75% of the rest of that allocation in this RFA. Um, but Daniel, then, why, aren't they kind of having it both ways? You either have this year's contract or you have next year's contract. I mean, how can they apply next year's contract? to the extension? I don't know. Yeah. Those, are some of my, those are some of my questions for Stacy because what I'm very, very concerned about is that what sort of rules they're going to put around that three months of spending. I was advocating, and I think the rest of us should advocate for as much, as much flexibility as possible because I was explaining to Stacy if, if, if there were going to be required to carve off some of those dollars to maintain quality in some of the sites like we did when we first had to apply for this funding, and I, I mean, my program is going to go down bad. <laughs> I think we need as much flexibility as possible just to make a transition um, in our downsizing and our um, operating budget. So, but she said she's not sure. She really wants some of the money to go out to providers and not all just to be for program operating. So, it's um, it is very confusing. Well, and we're getting mixed messages because um, I asked Emily on Friday when we were there. I asked her, what happens if you don't have school readiness moving into the next year and you have school readiness now, which is exactly what happened to me. I have school readiness now, but I didn't qualify for school readiness moving forward. And they told me that I would still be getting school readiness funds for that three months. So that, that's contradicting what Stacy told you. Well, that makes so, sense because she, she told me I'm in the reverse. I'm, I'm um, uh, ineligible, I was ineligible last round, but we're going to have one school in the new round. And she said, but it won't start until October 1. We wouldn't bring you on July 1. So right. So, we're that's not, so if that's not starting okay. until October, then why are the other funds starting in October instead of just why is school readiness the only one I'm going to get 25% of that funding for on these on these three months if they are not starting the new one until October? So that doesn't make sense. We're getting two different stories here. I know, I know, and you know the problem I have with all of this is that um, is the co-mingling. Um, the code, I mean, these these funds, particularly, well, all of these funds are coming from different pieces. Of Legislation, um, and but they're they're commingling and they're getting themselves really mixed up, and that that's part of the problems I have with with managing these funds, the mixing up that they're doing. But I don't so know. I, think, I don't have any indication. So I think that's definitely a question we need to have clarified. Of are we on the three months? Are we operating on current what um, budgets that we have now? Or are we going to start operating on budgets that are going to be starting technically in October with that amount of funds? Hi, well, that's a Karina. good thing to put on our question. This is Karina. My clarification that I received was for systems building, we're going off of the new allocation. For any QI, we're going off of our previous three our previous allocation. So systems building is coming from the new one um, for those three months. Previous 
or, and then all QI is com coming from our previous allocation. So if you had ITQA or SRQIP or CCAP, those are from what you're currently getting. So they'll do, you know, 25% of our current allocation. But for systems building, it'll be from the new starting June 1 this year grant. So that makes more sense. Okay. What else? I know Sarah's looking. <laughs> Sarah's trying to capture all this. Um, it's obviously really complex. I know her fingers are getting tired. Um, why, don't, why don't we wrap it up there? It's about 12 after. If you have additional questions after you've had a little more time to digest all this and reflect on this conversation, please feel free to send them in. Um, but let's try and get those in 5 o'clock today, if possible, or at least by tomorrow morning. I'll send out an email. We'll try and send out the recording today. Um, we had good attendance when we first started the conversation. I think we got up to 18 or 19 attendees at that class. Um, but let's wrap it up for now. And uh, we'll be talking. And send your questions in. And we'll get those cleaned up. And Denver will submit those on behalf of everyone. But we'll. We'll keep talking, and again, we will meet. Uh, we'll have another call next Monday at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll do that throughout the month, so you guys can continue to talk and try and get as much clarity on this process as possible. All right. Well, thanks everyone for your time, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye.